In this Elden Ring video, I'm gonna be showing you my Supreme Samurai build. This is an all game build that can be used from the very beginning of the game all the way through New Game and through New Game Plus, and it is a dexterity focused samurai. A lot of people are probably wondering, what do you do when you start with a samurai build and you don't go the Moonveil route and switch into a Moonveil Samurai or you don't go the Blood Flame Bushido route? What is a good route to go for your samurai if you wanna play like a pure dex samurai or a strength samurai? And that's what I wanna show in this video, how to do that successfully. So first up, let's talk about the weapon we're using for this build. We are using the Naga Kiba here. This is hands down one of my top five weapons in this game. If I ever make a top fives weapons video, which is something I probably should do at some point, this weapon will be on that list. And this thing has exceptional reach. The stat requirements aren't too bad, particularly if you two hand it. And it outperforms the Uchi Katana in just about every way. The Uchi Katana and it are kind of neck and neck in terms of damage, but this has way substantial reach. The, the thing the Uchi Katana has going for it is the less requirements to use. However, I feel like the requirements for this, if you're going the dex route anyway, doesn't really matter. So what I've done here is I've used the keen version of this and I'm using the Unsheath Weapon Skill or Unsheath Ash of War. I really like Unsheath. It's the starting skill on the Uchi Katana. If you started as a samurai, you'll be very familiar with this. It's got a hold L2 and use R1 or hold L2 and use R2. The L1 is a faster slash and the R2 is a faster overhead slash that does more stance damage. So if you're going for staggers, you're going to use the R2 attack. If you're going for a faster attack, like you need to read an enemy quickly, you're not sure what he's going to do, R1 is the way to go, hands down. This weapon skill does fantastic damage, particularly early on in the game. If you use this as a samurai, like if you're using a Nuchi Katana, you should be familiar. This thing absolutely shreds bosses. It's really, really good early game, even when your weapon's not upgraded, and it stays good throughout the whole game. And when you get the added reach of the Nagakiba to that sort of R2 and R1 attacks out of your L2, you can absolutely get the drop on enemies that are going for a lineup for an attack and you can interrupt them with that attack so that they can't complete that attack and you get that damage on them while they're attacking, which just prevents them from hitting you, so it's really great. That means you're sort of playing this build as like a reactionary build. A lot of times you're aggressive, like on boss fights, if you're going for the R2, R2, sort of the Moonveil strategy, you're gonna be very aggressive trying to stagger a boss or maybe you buffed your weapon with uh, blood grease, so you're trying to get R1, R1, R1 to trigger that blood loss, then you're going to be really aggressive. But a lot of times too, if you don't know an enemy or if an enemy is very aggressive, you can play defensively, hold your L2, wait for the enemy and react accordingly. You can either dodge out of it or you can R1 or R2. It gives you a lot of variety of things you can do. Now another really good thing about leaving our weapon as a pure physical damage type is that we can buff it with uh, greases as I just mentioned. And if you know the weaknesses of the enemies, like if you have the wiki to hand or if you remember what the weaknesses of these enemies or bosses are because you've done them you know, multiple times, particularly if you're like on New Game Plus, then you can craft these greases to go into these scenarios and you know get the drop on these. A lot of bosses are weak to different stuff early on. Lightning is a very good damage early, um, so lightning grease is really good early on in the game. But there are a lot of things like you can use blood grease to help trigger hemorrhage quicker, you can use magic grease, you can use dragon grease if you're fighting like a Gil, for instance, that's very helpful there as it increases your damage against dragons. This allows you to a little more flexibility than like the Blood Flame Bushido Blade or the Bushido Samurai build was because that was just focused on bleeding. This gives you the option to like switch the damage type around depending on what you're facing. And particularly if you're playing a new game plus, these should be easy for you to make. You just have tons of crafting materials for these. If for some reason you're playing new game, you'll have to get the recipe books to create these will be a little bit harder to use these effectively at the beginning, but not insanely difficult. So when it comes to armor for this build, this is all about fashion for me. I'm trying to get that samurai look or that ronin look, so I really went and mixed and matched pieces to try and give me that, and also make it a little bit different than the other samurai builds I've done. I have the Nox Swordstress armor for the chest, I have the white reed gauntlets for my arms, and then I have the two pieces of the ronin set for my helmet and legs. That kind of gives us the look that we're going for here. It doesn't, it's not min-maxed in terms of protection and things like that, but it would give you that appearance. I feel like if you're trying to play a samurai in this game, again, I may have mentioned this in previous videos, that you want to look like a samurai, you want to feel like a samurai while you're playing. You don't want to just be like the tankiest knight ever with a katana. Additionally, by using these armors pieces and using the bull goat's talisman and the great jar's arsenal, we're able to get light equip load, being able to roll as far as you can possibly roll, which is really nice. Plays very well in a samurai build, in my opinion. And you still have that 51 poise breakpoint so that you can tank through one hit. Like if you're fighting a rat or something and you attack, they're not going to interrupt your attack. You're going to be able to finish your attack, which would be very, very frustrating, in particular if you're playing a light build. So you kind of have the best of both worlds here. You have light rolling and you have enough poise in order to tank through a hit. So added to this, we're also using the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman to further increase our protection because we're not wearing like the heaviest armor and a lot of times you're trading 
And we also have the Shard of Alexander to further increase our damage with our Unsheath attacks. You're using Unsheath all the time with this build, so boosting that is really good. Now, these are not the only talismans you could use. For instance, the Assassin's Cerulean Dagger is really good for early game, like if you're playing a new game and your weapon isn't like totally upgraded yet. You tend to stagger a lot more enemies with the R2 attack of Unsheath before, instead of actually one-shotting them like I'm doing in a lot of the footage here. So you'll stagger them and then you can go in for a critical attack, often refunding the cost of your Unsheath attack. So that keep, allows you to use Unsheath a little bit more. But as you defeat enemies more and more and your, your attack power goes up higher and higher and you start getting this build put together, you probably will sub that out at some point. Additionally, the Ritual Sword Talisman is not a bad choice if you're confident, you're more methodical in your playstyle. I tend to be very aggressive because I know I got tons of flasks in New Game Plus. But if you're playing, you know, more cautiously, like in New Game or something like that, you don't have a lot of flasks yet. It's not a bad choice to use this in order to give you more damage for your health set full. Again, I play very aggressively, so it's not that useful for me. But if you're playing more cautiously, it's not a bad choice. Additionally, Millicent's Prosthesis is not a bad choice for this build either. This will give you extra dexterity, which is great for increasing your damage, and it'll give you extra damage if you attack repeatedly. If you're playing very aggressively like I tend to play, then this is not a bad choice for you. It's just not always useful all the time. I like it a little bit more than Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, though, because of that extra 5 dexterity, which gives you damage all the time. So that's not a bad option either. When it comes to our stats for this build, we have 50 Vigor, 25 Mind, 38 Endurance, 18 Strength, 80 Dexterity, 16 Intelligence, 7 Faith, and 9 Arcane. We don't need any Intelligence, Faith, or Arcane for this build at all. We do not use any spells. This is because I started as an Astrologer, so disregard all three of those stats. Those will be whatever your starting class is. If it's a Samurai, those will obviously be lower. 50 Vigor is probably the bare minimum you want at the start of New Game Plus, which is where I am in this footage. So you'll probably want to get this up to 60 throughout New Game Plus in order to give yourself, you know, enough health that you're not one-shot by later game bosses. 25 Mind just gives us enough FP to play around with Unsheath. This is plenty in my opinion. You could probably drop this down to 20 if you don't mind drinking a blue flask every now and then. You don't really need much Mind for this build. All you're really using it for is Unsheath, and you can still use this liberally with 25. When it comes to Endurance, we have 38 here, which seems like a lot for this build, and it is, but the Nagakiba is a stamina hog. It absolutely uses a ton of stamina, whether you're R1 spamming, whether you're L2 Unsheathing with your Unsheath attacks, your dodge rolling coming out of that L2 R2ing. It just uses a ton of stamina for this build, and also this helps us get to the light equip load so that you can dodge at max dodge distance and you know still be under that weight threshold. So you would need a lot of endurance plus the Great Jar's Arsenal with the weapon or sorry armor set that we're wearing in order to get that light equip load. If you don't care about the light equip load, you can drop this down and replace the Great Jar's Arsenal with one of the other talismans that I mentioned. But if you want that light equip load, you're going to have to get somewhere around 38 endurance. When it comes to strength, I have 18 here. 18 is enough to one hand this weapon. You don't need to one-hand this weapon with this build. I'm two-handing it pretty much everywhere. So you can drop this down to 12. Particularly early game, I recommend this if you're just starting out a new playthrough. Don't go higher than 12 and just focus on your dexterity in order to get to that 22 mark more quickly. And then you can two-hand the weapon and not have, like, you know, not meet the requirements, essentially. So I don't really need 18 strength here. You could pull these out and drop them into vigor or something like that. I just haven't changed it up. When I was figuring out how I wanted to play this build, I was one-handing it at the beginning. Then I switched to two-handing. I just didn't change these stats. So you only need 12 but you can use 18 if you want a one hand. And when it comes to dexterity, we have 80 here. This is about the point where damage really starts to fall off with this build. This makes this build not as good past New Game Plus, in my opinion. You're going to struggle with this in New Game Plus Plus unless you switch to quality, at which point you need about 65 strength and 65 dexterity in order to get more damage than what we have now. And then obviously you can go up to 80 in both those and get some more damage. That would put you ahead here, but that is a huge point investment and it's going to be a while before you, you know, swap over to that. So you could do New Game Plus Plus with quality, but you're not going to get a ton more damage. So this is a New Game or New Game Plus build mostly. And again, keep in mind if you're using something like Millicent's Prosthesis for this build, you probably want to put your Dexterity at 75 and drop that in. That frees up five more points for you. This is really good, particularly if you're in your first playthrough, because you won't quite have as many levels yet. And when it comes to the Flask of Wonders Physique with this build, I like the Green Burst Crystal tier. This increases the speed at which you recover stamina. We go through a lot of stamina of this build. Getting it back more quickly means we can use it more quickly. So it's really good if you're being aggressive. Additionally, I like to use the Crystal Tier that increases your poise damage if you're kind of going for that L2, R2 attack strategy similar to Moonveil and bosses going for the stagger. This will help you stagger them more easily so you can get those critical strikes or just attack them when they're laying on the ground. Or if you're kind of going the Blood Grease route and attacking rapidly with R1 attacks, uh, using the one that increases your damage with successive attacks is really good for this. So that'll give you more damage for that. So either one of those works really well. And if you're in your first playthrough, you could even use the one that increases your dexterity just to give you more flat damage in general. 
When it comes to the rune that I recommend using for this build, I would recommend either using Radon's Great Rune, because this is going to increase your health, your stamina, your FP, all those are very useful for this build. Or you could use Millennia's Great Rune, because this allows you to gain health back as you attack. You're aggressive with this build a lot of the times, or at least I am. So that's a really good strategy with this, at least towards the end of your first playthrough. Godric's is okay for this build, particularly early on, because you do use five stats, although you don't really need much strength, so it's more like four. But it's not one that I would maintain the whole game, because you really don't need hardly any strength at all, so you're not getting a lot out of it. And that wraps up our Supreme Samurai video. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. We do have more builds coming, along with more weapon videos. You can stay tuned for those. If you have suggestions on builds or weapon videos, please leave them in the comments. We do have some Diablo 4 content coming over the next week and a half, and then we'll probably be back on Elden Ring a lot more after that. We'll be right back.